what up, what up, what up? Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Sorry I haven't made many videos lately. I had a little baby girl, um, yeah, called Lyra about a month ago, which has been taking up a lot of my spare time. I have managed a few sessions and today's windy and there's waves, so I'm gonna get on the water. It's looking a little bit overcast, but my homie Dave Av is gonna come and film some drone shots because I've been having so much fun when wing foiling in the waves. You just can't beat those calves. Um, and Hailing Island's actually a really good place for it. So I've been winging for um, about a year and a half now. And in this video, I just wanted to share a few of my top tips, things that I've picked up and learned over the past year or so of winging that I wish someone told me when I was starting my journey because it would have saved several swims in and painful sessions shouting at myself on the board. So um, let's get into it. tash do you reckon i can pull it off apparently when you're a dad you can pull off a tash i've actually never rocked a tash before let me know in the comments right so tip one is rig big um yeah my tip is that generally if you're not sure what size to go out on take the biggest size um it's not like kiting where being overpowered is really dangerous and inhibits your progression um, obviously, if you're overpowered kiting, you can get dragged up the beach. You know, it can be super dangerous. Uh, but with, with, with winging, it doesn't seem to matter as much. The main disadvantage of being like with being severely overpowered is just your arms ache. When you're learning, you're so inefficient at the transfer of power from the wing to the board. It just helps to have more power. It also makes it much easier to get up on the foil because instead of having to like pump the wing and pump the board really awkwardly when you don't know how to do it, you can literally rely on the power of the wing and the speed of the board. And when that foil hits the perfect speed, then it'll just raise up. If you're having to like pump the wing because you don't have enough power, it just makes it so much harder. So I would definitely always recommend to, to rig big, make sure you've got more power than less power. You can always just let go of the wing and, and paddle in at the end of the day. Um, so th there's no real danger to being overpowered. Obviously, you may accelerate and, and have maybe a bit more of a wipeout, but your progression is going to be so much faster. And there is nothing worse than being underpowered wing foiling, because when you're not on the foil, you just basically drift off downwind. Um, so it's way better to be up on the foil and going upwind. <laughs> to be on the correct 
equipment for both your your level and the conditions during that day. The general rule of thumb is to take your weight and add 20 or 30. Now that'll give you the rough literage that'll be the ideal board to learn on, um, which would be around 110, 120 litre board for me. And then I jump down onto the 80 litre board, um, which is still my go-to board, which is what I'm gonna use this session. The reason why I like the 80 litre board for myself is that it just about floats. If, if there's a little puff of wind, then I can keep it out of the water. If I'm not moving at all, it does sink slightly, but it's also small enough where I can still carve the board and progress, but not too big where it has the swing weight of like a 120 litre board. I would really resist the urge of trying to skip steps because if you think, oh, I can get away with using a small board, it does definitely slow your progression. Like I've been out with mates before that, you know, desperate to get on like a 40 litre board and they catch like one or two waves the whole session because they're too busy floundering. Whereas I've caught 20 waves with my 80 litre board and I'm a lot more stoked than I am. Um, I do have a 45 litre and also I'm, I am really enjoying my 60 litre at the moment, but it does have to be the right conditions. So I bring it back to my original point of being on the right conditions is on the right equipment is so so important i think way more so than than kiting um as well so quickly to touch on the foil if you're learning you want to definitely be uh on a surface area foil of 2000 or more that's going to make it so much easier especially if you're using a big board like a 120 liter board my favorite at the moment is the phantasm 926 this baby behind me that's 1300 surface area um and I just about use that in everything. For me, I'd rather take a bigger wing and have a smaller, more agile foil. Um, but I do have like a 2000 foil as well that I use sometimes in very light wind. But if I can, I'll be on this. The average size, I'd say, is 1500 is kind of like um, what you'd probably step down to from a 2000 if you're learning down to a 1500. So, yeah, there are my two tips. Enough chat. I just wanted to share that little bit of knowledge with you uh, to help you on your wing foiling journey. Let's go down the beach and catch some waves. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment. Really appreciate it, guys. It all really helps the channel. And yeah, thanks to Dave for filming. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.